SummerSlam is arguably the second biggest PLE you can throw in kind of Royal, Royal Rumble in there, but the case for it being second behind WrestleMania is very strong. And with that, you know, if a moment happens here at SummerSlam, it tends to live forever. And none more so greater than if a title were to change hands at the biggest party of the summer. So with that, I'm going to take a look at every title on the main roster and see which ones are in danger and which ones are not of, you know, changing hands at SummerSlam. But before we get into that, go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe button. I am currently uh, on my way to my first sort of sub goal of right now. We're right around 50 at the time of recording. So my next goal is now 100 subs. If you can smash that sub button, hit that like button, it means the world to me. But without further ado, let's get right into it. I'm, I'm going to use a scale of five different like danger levels to see to uh, kind of go through this. The first one is no danger or not defended. And these are titles which either won't be defended at the uh, PLE or if they are, it's there's virtually no shot of them of the champion losing. Then we have very little danger to which there's an outside you no know, snowball chance in hell of the title change of hands. But eh. then I have somewhat da uh, danger. And that's more so like, yeah, there, there is a chance that makes sense if a title, if this title were to change hands to an opponent, but mm, I can also see the rain continuing. You have a decent amount of danger to which like, you know, the signs are starting to point toward a title change based on like the feud or the champion itself, or, you know, momentum starting to go that way towards a new champion. And then last, but not least, I have, it's over, bro. Title's gone. Kiss it while you can. Come SummerSlam, it's over. All right, I'm going to start off with the titles and the reigns that I think are in no danger or just aren't going to be defended at the show. We have the World Tag Team titles held by the Judgment Day, Finn Balor, JD McDonough. Right now, there's really... The Judgment Day is sort of wrapped up in like two major plots and like a subplot of its own with Rhea Liv, Damian Gunther, and you know, everyone else kind of get wrapped up in that alliances faltering, you know, loyalties being questioned so much that I don't think a proper tag team match can be put on this. So, you know, no uh, world titles probably not being defended on a show. Right to the other brand, the WWE Tag Team Titles. Now, as a recording of this, there is a six team gauntlet match, I believe. Upcoming SmackDown, see who faces the champs DIY. I believe that that title defense will happen on the SmackDown before SummerSlam, unless the, now it'll probably happen to uh, SmackDown before SummerSlam. SummerSlam cards probably already stacked and done as well. So no danger of the titles changing hands at SummerSlam itself. Next, I have the Women's Tag Team Championships held by Unholy Union. Uh, they're picked up like two feuds in the last week or three, actually, between you know, Jay Cargill, Bianca Belair, uh, Metaphor down NXT, and, you know, Sonya Deville, Zoe Stark, Shayna Baszler on Raw. Between all of that, they're starting to you know, pick up some steam, pick up some action for those titles. I just don't see any of them happening at SummerSlam, especially with an NXT defense at the Great American Bash beforehand. So no shot of them losing the title at SummerSlam. And then because it is a main roster title and I have to include it, the WWE Speed Championship held by Andrade, less said about that, the better. Funny enough, when I made this list, I Thought I would have more championships in the next category. Very little danger, but I got none. I don't think any sort of championship that is going to be at SummerSlam is in a very little uh, danger. I do think each title has some sort of degree of potentially being um, ch uh, changed. So none in very little danger. Somewhat dangerous. I have two here. 
Let's start with the WWE Women's Championship held by Bailey. Now this feud uh, between Bailey and Nia Jax, the match is going to take place at SummerSlam. Been up and down. Uh, hasn't really clicked on all cylinders like it probably should or probably WWE thought was going to. But it's somewhat dangerous in the fact that Nia has, you know, her, her second run has been fantastic. She's been great on the mic. She's been getting the right heat. She's been putting on great matches. She was rewarded with Queen of the Ring. So, but they want to take the title off Bailey, who won it at WrestleMania after a fantastic build in that regard. Throw it on Nia. Have Nia just be a monster heel champion. Awesome. I still think there's meat on the bones of the title reign of Bailey when you have a Bianca Belair, a Jade Cargill, and and maybe most important, the Miss Money in the Bank, Tiffany Stratton, in the wings and kind of play with that. So I, I still think there's much more on the title reign of Bailey we can get into. So that's why it's not somewhat dangerous because Cassie and I win, yeah, but. Uh, there's so much more to do with Bailey, so it's gonna be just somewhat dangerous. And next is the WWE Championship with Cody Rhodes. Whoa! Who is facing Solo Sokoa at SummerSlam. If WWE wants to, one, solidify Solo as the true tribal chief, they can go ahead and take a page out of like the WrestleMania 40 main event and just have the bloodline interfere like crazy. You know, no, uh, fool the ref a couple of times, take out Cody, one, two, three, soul is your champion. And, and while that doesn't sound uh, maybe appealing to the masses, it's, it seems very plausible if it helps the bloodline story go forward. If not, so that's why it's somewhat dangerous. It's not any higher because I, the way I see the storylines moving forward between not only a bloodline, but Cody Rhodes I think I do think this is where they kind of separate for a bit because again if you see one of my last videos who should main event SummerSlam uh, I do believe we see the return of the real tribal chief Roman Reigns after this match and so you have the bloodline leadership struggle going this way and then based on teases and how things are working and all that kind of stuff. I do believe Cody Rhodes next opponent, next feud is none other than the legend killer, Randy Orton. I think this SmackDown under SummerSlam, Randy's like, oh yeah, you did it. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, Bloodline's doing their stuff. Oh yeah. By the way, wha-bam, RKO. We get that feud going. So while I can see Solo winning, I am leaning, Not it's not a prediction yet. I'm still going Give myself time to think about it, but right now I'm leaning towards Cody retaining and them kind of doing their things. But right now, Cody's reign is in somewhat danger. Next, we move to a decent amount of danger. Next, I'll start with the Women's World Championship held by Liv Morgan, who is facing Rhea Ripley, a returning Rhea Ripley at SummerSlam. You know, while Rhea was out, Liv did her best to you know, get Dom Mysterio, Rhea's boy, on her side with the presence and the, the assumed nudes and helping, you know, Dom finally beat his dad while Dom inadvertently but still helped live win the title in the first place. And I know as of the as of the recent most recent Raw this recording Dom told Liv, oh, I don't like you, I hate you, and stuff, and all that. And so all that momentum, Rhea just being more physically dominant, being a bigger star, all that leans towards a Liv, uh, Liv Morgan losing her title back to mommy and all becoming right in a judgment day. I don't think it's in the final category that it's over category. Because there's a slight chance Liv still holds it and you have Rhea still chasing for a couple months because there's some, you know, like with Bailey as champion, there's some meat on the bones of the story still with Rhea chasing Liv. So while I do think the momentum swings towards Rhea and all this, 
do not be surprised if Liv pulls out the win. And next in a decent amount of danger category, we have the World Heavyweight Champion Damian Priest, who is being challenged by Gunther at SummerSlam for his title. And similar to Rhea, but 10 times more, you know, Gunther coming off the uh, longest and best intercontinental reign of all time, really went into uh, winning King in a Ring, which get, gave him this opportunity. And, you know, Gunther has just been a freight train of momentum. He has been uh, just a person who has beat, based, he has beat everyone in his path. He has, a, you know, you line him up, he'll knock him down. And Damian Priest looks to be his next victim. And again, it's all signs point to Gunther walking down. He's got the momentum. He has the backing. He's the next monster heel. He's the next world beater, especially on a raw side that while other, while like a Drew McIntyre is occupied, needs a, needs that type of heel in the, the title scene. So Gunther would be perfect as a champion. Now I do give a slight hope to Damian Priest because you know, for, forget what the internet says. Damian Priest's run has been fantastic. He's been a great champion. And with all the stuff going on Judgment Day, there's still, you know, a story there. There's still a month or so we can, or months we can go with the, him as champion and more people to face. But right now it's leaning heavily towards Gunther, which is why Damian Priest's title reign is in a decent amount of trouble. And finally, we come to it's, it's over, bro. The title reigns over. And I'm going to start first with the Intercontinental title held by Sami Zayn, who faces Braun Breaker at SummerSlam. And if not now, when? And if you don't do that SummerSlam, you run the risk of damaging Braun because Braun got basically got this shot by just spearing the crap out of everybody who just breathes that in his general direction. And he faced Sami Zayn at Money in Bank and lost clean which was a weird booking choice. And so he got this title back. He got the number one contender match, which he won on Raw by just spearing everybody. And he just broke Ilya, basically made him unable to compete. And he, to close that Raw, he broke Sammy. The title has to go to Braun to keep the, you know, momentum he has to keep the uh, swag he has. Otherwise, you do. It's, it gets repetitive and there's no, there's nothing to back it up because, you know, you go from like building momentum, taking people out to, on the way to gold to just being a guy that's just a workplace nuisance. The title has to change hands at SummerSlam and I'm shaking the uh, magic eight ball. I'm reading the cards and it's over. The title reign ends for Sami Zayn. And last but not least, we have the hometown boy, the United States champion, Logan Paul, who... When he first won the title at uh, Crown Jewel back in November, I thought, oh, this is cool. He'll take it on his podcast. He'll take it around the world. He'll la di da di da boo ba da boo bring prestige, you know, defend it, come here, you know, I'll work with different talents. And the, what was it? At the, by the time he faces Logan, uh, LA Knight, it'll be nine months. Oh, by the way, he's facing LA Knight at SummerSlam. By the time he faces LA Knight at SummerSlam, it'll be like nine months title reign. Two, def uh, two defenses before that night. So I was like, are you really elevated or are you just kind of using it? And so I think uh, the United States title needs a person who's going to defend it regularly, who, you know, if they show up on a random SmackDown, defend it, it's not out of question. They can elevate uh, people and it's, it happens to be super popular, one of the most pe over people on SmackDown. And so with that, Logan Paul, at the hands of LA Knight at SummerSlam, your title reign, it, it's over, bro. You, you did okay, kid, but it's over. All right, that's going to take us to the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Do you agree with, with me? Who do you think is less in danger than what I said? Who do you think is more in danger than what I said? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading them. Like I said, go ahead and like and subscribe. I'm on my way to 100 subscribers here. Every subscriber means the world to me. Thank you so much. On, on all socials, I am at It's Heartfelt, but for right now, I am just Heartfelt. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.